No more recess. That's right. Many elementary schools across this country are eliminating recess because they say they need more time to teach their children. Well, when I was growing up, we had recess. And unfortunately, the elementary school I went to now no longer has recess. They have it maybe at most two days a week. Now, when I was growing up, we had complex schedules. They would always change, you know, depending on what day of the week it was, what time of the year it was. You know, we had marking periods and all this other stuff, specials, they called it, for classes that would suddenly appear. And now, besides having all that confusion, these children are now going to have to deal with schedules with or without recess. When I was growing up, we had a 25-minute recess, and I was upset that it wasn't a full half hour. But we still had something called morning recess. It was the time period it took for all the children to arrive to school. And that time, kids would do many things. Many kids used to play soccer out in the field. Well, they don't even have that anymore. Now these children are forced to sit around all day and just learn. When you have a job, let's say you only work six hours a day, they still usually give you a 15 minute break. These kids don't have anything. All right, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna have a lot of kids who are gonna be diagnosed with hyperactivity disorder and attention deficit disorder. I kid you not. When I was back in elementary school, me and my best friend, Doug Lowe, we would talk about how hyperactivity disorder and attention deficit disorder, excuse me, attention deficit disorder was a scam. We used to just call it had ad as a little inside conversation. Well, you see, the whole thing is that I don't know what they are using it for, but it seems like there's another agenda behind that. And also, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot of kids, besides on drugs like Ritalin, because they want to move around, you're going to see kids who are just straight up depressed and are going to be put on antidepressants. Why is my son or daughter upset? Why aren't they happy? Why can't they act like normal children? Because they aren't treated like normal children. They're forced to sit like a slave inside of a desk all day. They can't go around and learn. See, the thing is that human beings, we are creators. We are builders. We are doers, and we also hunt and forge. It's natural for children to move around. It helps them cope and deal with things throughout the day. They have a whole bunch of energy because they're supposed to be exploring and learning how things work. And when you censor that, when you limit that, they have a lot of problems. What you're going to see is a lot of people are going to start complaining about how we need more gym class or more sports programs because our children are getting obese when really they already had gym class and it was in the form of recess. That's where they love moving around. And you can't even do that anymore. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue this video, but I'm also going to split it and make it a separate part for reference if you want to talk about another topic, which is the basically some of the things that happened to me when I was in recess and how a lot of people are discussing how we're making recess and gym class and other things too safe for children and they're losing the fun of it. Well, I'll start the video off like this. No more dodgeball. That's right. When I was growing up in elementary school, we had this game we called dodgeball. Now, it wasn't dodgeball in the sense that we had two lines. What we had was a big circle. There was a pavement area in front of our uh, playground. And the big white circle, what we had were six children in the middle running around. And the outside was completely full of kids. I mean, there was days where basically everyone in recess stood around at the cir circle shoulder to shoulder. It was that popular of a game that I know that everyone I know of was able to at least one time be in the center of the circle and throw a ball. So everyone got to participate in this game. And we actually developed individual personalities. Certain kids had certain styles, certain moves. We gave them nicknames. And we met kids from other grades we normally wouldn't meet. And we became best friends. We organized the whole thing. It, it, we basically, like I said, had six kids dancing around in the center. And you would try throwing the ball at them. And if you hit them with the ball, you would switch places. You know how that goes. All right. Well, dodgeball was a great game. We had a lot of fun. A lot of kids participating. And the teachers, you know, as time goes on, they get a little curious what's going on. Why are all the kids involved in this? And they started kind of censoring it. and started making it safer. You know, you're throwing the ball too high. You're throwing the ball too hard. Don't run so fast. And, you know, kids got little injuries, but they were like literally scratches and little bruises. They weren't anything big. They were not anything big. And... We actually kind of honestly chuckled when an injury occurred because no one got hurt. It was one of those little clumsy air things that everyone kind of laughed at. So it was a fun game. And like I said, everyone was included in it. I mean, even the kids who weren't very physically fit, you know, very athletic, got to participate and actually did quite well. Well, the teachers grew upset. They you know, kept on wanting to make it safer and safer to the point that they eliminated it, elimin excuse me, eliminated it altogether. 
when they eliminated it, they actually guarded the circle as if it was like some military compound. They didn't let you walk on it or even look at it too long. So people stopped playing because they had to. They banned it. And even if the ban, I think, only lasts like a week, they tried bringing it back, you know, slowly. They're like, well, we're just going to watch you and make sure everything's okay like we did before. Uh, just, you know, we want to make sure that no one's going to get hurt. And no one played. Well, you guys proved yourself so well that we're just going to let you play whatever you want to play, any way you want to play it, because you guys are responsible. No one played. Why? Well, it was simple. They took away something we created and made it their own. They took away our rights and kind of made, made them privileges. So we stopped playing kickball. Now, there were some other silly, stupid things we used to do as kids. I remember we wanted to do a lot of those Red Rover games where you run into the chain, and they didn't let us do that. Um... I remember the old playground. We had this old playground where everything was made out of this really nasty lumber and had these huge splinters. But, you know, we never got hurt. We had this huge stainless steel slide. Huge slide. And it and during a sunny day, if you looked at it wrong, you would go blind. And it was so hot that if you sat on it, you would get a burn. But we had this game where kids would be at the top and kids would be at the bottom. And the kids at the top would try to kick the kids from, at the bottom to stay down. And if you were at the bottom, you would grab up, crawl up, and you would try to pull the kids down. And, you know, there was never really any major injuries, but that was another game that, you know, obviously as time went on, they tried banning. But the best thing at recess, I'd have to say, was the tire swings. We had these tire swings, which were made out of real car tires and real metal chains, and we played a game called bumper cars. What you would do is you would have a bunch of kids sit in the, um, the tire swing, and you would push it really, really fast and really, really high. So what would happen is when you angled it, it would bounce off the pillars that held up the whole assembly. So the idea was that as you're bouncing off pillar to pillar, it was kind of like you were playing bumper cars. Well, they replaced those tire swings with these plastic ones. They had plastic chains and these plastic things which looked like tires, but no way it worked. It was a little difficult to play the games we wanted to play, so what we did is we just had the standard try to push the tire swing over the top, see how high you can get it, make it snap back, or we would take the kids and spin them around in circles really, really fast and see if they got dizzy. And no one got hurt. We all had a good time. Well, let's see. What other games and things we had? Well, we had, believe it or not, actually gravel as the cushion in our playground for many years. Real gravel, like when you're paving a street. And kids got cut knees and stuff, but we all seemed to survive. And in gym class, we had this game we used to love playing, but it got banned. It was called Beanbag Toe Tag. The strategy of the game is that you have the gymnasium split into half. And one team's on one side and one team's on the other side. And then right next to the walls on either side, there was these little areas that were marked off known as jails. The idea was that you would have a bean bag and you would chuck it at the bottom of the floor. And if it hit an opposing player's foot, they were out and they had to go to your jail, which was behind you. And the way the game was won is that eventually... The team ran out of players and thus was the loser. Or when the time was called, the majority, the team that had the majority of players still in good game were the winners. Okay. The way you would get put back into the game, because once your, your shoe got hit with a beanbag, you could still be in the game. If a beanbag landed into the jail and you were lucky enough to get it, you would wave it out kind of like a free pass and you would get back in the game and be able to use it. It was a really, really fun game. Kids loved it. You know, it was just an amazingly fun game, but we all knew chucking these bean bags, eventually there was going to be an issue. So there was a kid who I believe was bending down to pick up a bean bag. And the other kid might have been throwing a little bit high today, but he was a strong kid, so he was probably throwing pretty hard. And the kid got hit in the eye. I can't remember. It might have been uh, the left eye, but he got hit in the eye and it grew bloodshot really, really bad. I mean, it was a bad you know, injury for a little kid, but he didn't go blind or anything. It took a while for his eye to heal, but after that, obviously, beanbag toe tag was scrapped and we couldn't play it anymore as much as kids demanded that we play it. The funny thing was that I, I both kids were my were some of my best friends and I had you know, Cub Scouts with them. But anyway, that was that. Now, there's one funny thing I, I wanted to end on here, and I know the majority of people watching this video probably will not know what the hell I'm talking about, but... If you know me, you heard some of my campfire stories, you know what I'm talking about. We played a game during recess. Well, kind of were forced to this game. 
and it was known as the disease. Now, it was really, really funny, and you're probably chuckling if you know what I'm talking about. I sure know David Larenko knows what I'm talking about. Take care, y'all.